whole green transition and climate change is, 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 is people. It's about people. We set off to change from fossil fuel economy to a totally 100% green economy. We saw very early in the process that people came from outside, from abroad, to study what was happening here. We saw that we cannot just keep on being, being good for ourselves, we need to share that with the rest of the world. People want to look at Samsø as a model. We are not a model. The model uh, is, is something you can use if you want to co copy something. I want to have this as a reflection point where you say, maybe we can get some inspiration from Samsø and then see that what we have learned in, in Samsung and take elements of that and bring it into your own society and see how it works there. Uh, my name is uh, Søren Hermansen, I'm from Denmark. So I'm from an island called Samsø, and Samsø is very central in Denmark. This is my island. I mean, this is maybe the most beautiful place on earth, seen from my point of view. Samsø means meeting island. It's all the way back from the Viking period when people were sailing. It was a natural place to meet because when you crossed from east to west in Denmark, you naturally passed Samsø. We had a minister in 1997 who was very ambitious and he went to Kyoto and promised in Kyoto at the COP3 uh, climate meeting that Denmark would cut down 21% of the present CO2 emission. Then he came home and he said, we need to prove that this is possible. So why don't we find a small community where it's not so expensive and risky to make this transition? Suddenly the vision of the Samsu being a renewable energy arised and I was like, Oh, this is a totally nice job for you. And he was like, I'm not an engineer. And I said, yes, you are, you know, a farming engineer who knows a little about different practicalities. Your family has a good reputation, so it is possible for you to convince people. I thought it was a little bit crazy and I, I feared a little bit it was like hot air, but I, I felt it was my call and I had to be there. Nu var jeg sådan, at jeg var siddet med til at bestemme, at det skulle udvikles. Jeg var med dengang, det blev søgt om tilskud. Så jeg har aldrig tørst, at jeg var tosset på noget tidspunkt. Jeg blev the manager af the Energy Island Project. Og vi set off to change from fossil fuel economy to a totally 100% green economy. And we had to do that in 10 years. The rest of, of, of the population was like rather they didn't think much of it, just a crazy idea from a minister. The fear of change is embedded in people. We know what we have, we don't know what's in the future. To make this, to break this, this, uh, this human resistance, you need to kind of invite to the pro in the process where people feel comfortable sitting down and talk about the unknown. Of course we had some resistance, but we try to invite people into our public meeting as, as early as possible to have the discussion and also uh, use our uh, energy democracy to make people a part of the decision making. Where should the wind turbines be built? How big should they be? Am I allowed to invest in them? And, and so on. There's something about community here also. If you are neighbor to a wind park, then you will be due to look at it every day. You'll wake up in the morning and look at it and it'll be in your sunset or in the sunrise or whatever. So, so it will be in your, in your face all the time. If you don't own a share in this wind park, then you'll hate it and you'll build a lot of resistance. If you're invited to participate as an owner or co-owner of the project, all of a sudden become yours. And when you wake up in the morning and you look at them spinning, then you think, wow, that's good. This is my, my doing. I'm part of this process and it creates, uh, generates uh, funds and money in my pocket. And I'm at the same time part of a, of a green transition, which is good. And then people go together and say, OK, I can put 10,000 into that and 10,000 into that. Small money, but with a big impact. So the mindset of people uh, taking care instead of waiting for the government to take care is a big shift in mind. We had a normal carbon footprint in 1997 when we started the project. We were totally depending on imported fuel from outside, both electricity and oil for transportation and heating. House heating was, was imported from outside. We looked at how do we 
replace oil with something we can produce locally. When we did the math about uh, technology and, and energy consumption, we could see that wind was pretty easy to cover because there's a lot of wind. So we erected 11 wind turbines, each one one megawatt. Then we made four district heating plants where you take away individual heating systems like little boilers, oil, oil boilers in, in private houses, and you make one central boiler and then you pipe hot water around to a number of houses or villages. We started in January 1998, and in 2005, we could actually say we were carbon negative. So in 2008, 10 years after, we claimed that we were now 100% self-supplied. So it took 10 years. We don't have the emission from the oil boilers anymore. It's, it's not there anymore. The particles and the unhealthy air pollution is gone. Jamen, hvis det kommer noget og spørger det her, her har vi bevist, det kan lade sig gøre. Og det andet noget, hokus pokus, det er de ting, der er til rådighed der satte i gang for at få klar. I've been the lucky owner of a windmill since August 2000, and that was a good thing in my life. It has been giving what I expected, uh, and maybe a little bit more in some years. I buy my energy from the next door neighbor now, uh, from the farmer. In, I used to buy it from an oil sheik from Saudi Arabia, but now I buy it locally. And I hope that the man who is selling me energy will use his money, his profit, to hire a carpenter to build his new house and stuff like that. So, so we, we have now raised the local economy balance and, and the capacity is so much stronger. Suddenly people from all over the country and even from other countries started to take the phone and call us. Oh, what is going on on this island? You are developing a lot of, bunch of things can come and visit you. And I very soon realized that, hey, we, we are not alone in this transition. And we need to reach out and make a network of hubs that will follow this lead. So my responsibility was to go out there and help them. There's an opening here in the timing. Yes. My life today is a lot about exchanges. And I'm invited to go to many different communities around the world where they face the same kind of challenge of local innovation and local development as we do. All right, how many is from South America? Wow, that's a lot. I think it's very wise that, some, that uh, Søren travels the world because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a very good story. And uh, he, he isn't telling the story from himself, but uh, he, he is telling it for the people on his island. My interest as a businessman is to understand how they did it, but more interesting, is it possible to scale this? Is it possible to use this lessons learned in Denmark, but even a broad Denmark, around the world? Are there other areas, islands for example, where this technology could be deployed? What Søren did on the island is to make people part of the energy system, literally. They make money when there's energy um, generated. I think that's very important to involve other people in the energy system. And why? Because the energy system is going to be everywhere. We have windmills, solar panels. We are basically living in a factory. Um, and some people think that's bad, but if you offer them a piece of that, um, then you can give them an advantage. And I think that's, that changes the perspective. My hopes is that what we set off to do I and mean, what, what we started up doing will continue. I think it's an eternal uh, effort to keep on trying and, and doing new things here also and break the traditional thinking and get into new paradigm. And I think sometimes we need to kind of get outside, break the wall down and, and do something crazy uh, that'll take us to another place or another dimension. So my passion, I think, I think my passion is to make that happen. <laughs>